expressions. My name is Yokas Gafile and I'll be a street journal for today. So we met again in a post office. So do you think as South African uh, young women we are safe? I really feel like we're not safe because I mean this was done in a public space. So even walking around anywhere is not safe. Anyone can just grab you and kidnap you or do something bad to you and burn you and no one's gonna ever find you. We've had many incidents. This is not the first, it's not the second, it's not the third and I assure you it's not the last incident. We've had little um, girls missing but there was nothing. The students are dying and, and um, with the one from UCT, she's not the first student. We had um, that a, a student was raped in um, an exam venue in Free State, but like there's nothing that has been done. We're always doing the shout outs in our social medias, everything that we're trying to do, but we cannot do anything if the government does not intervene. It needs um, correctional measures from the government. What happened to Nena was bad, it was terrible. It shouldn't happen, but we live in a reality where it happens constantly. I, for one, especially have little sisters. I always have a fear, will they return home safe? Are they safe where they are? So it's, it's it's not a safe world at all. We are not um, we are not safe. It keeps going on. So it's like no one is afraid of what might happen after that, after they've committed the crime. So it's like nothing is actually being done. They just get sentenced, go to prison, and that's the end of it. I think it's also a cultural thing, no? Because guys tend to feel like, okay, in the them, no? So I'm in control. I should get what I want. I really don't know what to tell about this because I feel like people only talk now. Now it's all over social media because a young girl was killed. This should be an ongoing thing. Everybody should fight. Even men should fight against it. If they did enough, then all of this wouldn't be happening. Like, men wouldn't just take advantage. There wouldn't be so many rape uh, cases if they did enough. They have to enforce their laws, like make them stronger so that men can also fear like raping, raping another woman. Why is this still happening to our younger sisters? Because not only students are being raped, innocent children who, who know nothing are being raped. It's just an emotional issue that I don't know. I think as a woman in general, you're not safe. They're disgusted and they're ashamed because these are bandy African. First year student at UCT. We are going to be a person who is assault, rape, and rape. We are going to be a person who is being enough. This is a very dark period in South Africa. But on that set note, we want to say hello, Dimelang Sanbonani, South Africa. Welcome to Expressions. This is definitely the place for you to air your views. I'm your host, Jacqueline Mapala. And I'm your host, Tumgoli Siwa Wamasang. Now we're coming to you live from our headquarters in Auckland Park, Johannesburg. Now it has been a very somber time for South Africans. Now this is after a UCT student, Oine Nemhoitjana, was raped and killed allegedly by a 42-year-old man. And a 25-year-old boxing champion, Leandri Yegels, was murdered by her policeman boyfriend. Now in a separate incident, a body of a 14-year-old girl was also found in a backyard in Cape Town, adding to a grim body count of women and girls across the country. Mm -hmm. This is a very scary issue. And sadly, the brutal killings of women is not the only thing irking the country. The recent spate of violent xenophobic attacks that broke out in Johannesburg and Pretoria has also has a lot of South Africans walking in shame. Now, a poor question that we're asking you here, Kohai, is, is South Africa failing to curb rape, murder, and violence? As expressions, we took to the streets to find out what young people have to say about the xenophobic attacks. Take a look at this. Okay, going back to the looting that happened in um, in Johannesburg yesterday and in Pretoria. So what do you think as an international student? Honestly, it's quite scary because I can't even leave my house anymore because I'm scared. If I walk out, somebody's just going to come at me speaking maybe Suto is Kosa and I won't understand. And that will immediately show this person is not from here. Then I could get stabbed, murdered, killed, and then all I have is my student card. My parents have to see me dead on the TV. With regards to the looting, we do understand that what uh, happened in Pretoria was extremely wrong. But now, even innocent people are dying. For instance, in Jumistin, there was a boy who was shot while they were trying um, to, to, to ban the cars of um, the Nigerians and stuff. And it's, it's, it's wrong because not only are um, the, the, the victims um, shooting out to the people who were, who were doing wrong things, but also innocent people. 
um, staff buses were being attacked, students couldn't um, um, travel from um, the campus to, to, to their residence. So now they, they had to walk all the way from campus to, to rest, so it's, it's, it's not good at all. Um, honestly, I feel like this is an issue that's going on all over South Africa. Even our fellow South Africans, they are also selling drugs. So we can't just put the blame on them because even our brothers in South Africa, they also do that. It's, it's never safe, man. I've, I've never really felt so unsafe in my entire life. Landry and Zekayo get xenophobic attacks. Kutene singa binga ma Afrika, siba manini en zanza Afrika. So we definitely need unity and to see an end to some of those xenophobic attacks that we've been seeing in Joburg and Pretoria. But to help me unpack this issue, I'm joined in studio by Mpilo Shobangu, who is from Ubuma Leadership. And I'm also joined by Dari Robure, who is from the African Youth Networks. Ladies. Welcome to Expressions. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you here. And of course, I never have this conversation by myself. My co-host Mkolesi is obviously manning our social media corner and bringing some of your insights to the Kohai about this issue that we are talking about in studio. But ladies, let, let's start to unpack this. And I know we are unpacking two issues, but I think they are both connected and related to each other, right? And I think, you know, maybe we start with you. I mean, South African women are sick and tired of living in a country where they are constantly fearful, yeah. where there's almost like a normalization yeah. of femicide as well as rape. And we just want to find out what will it take to keep South African women safe? Yeah, I think the issue is just that, for, so what social media has done is that it's actually amplified for us the problem that has been existing for so many years. And I think the issue is that maybe it's a matter of us not asking the right questions because you're constantly seeing in throughout today's conversation that women are sick and tired of being told of how to be safe in certain spaces because clearly there's no space where we are safe in. And I think now the conversation needs to really be led by men in terms of, especially those men who say, I'm not me or, you know, all these hashtags that the men are like following. And I think with that, that's the thing that we're trying to push within Ubuma leadership. We have a program called the Black Men's in Bizo whereby our black uh, male colleagues actually lead conversations with men from their communities to basically try and understand what is it that is making men feel like they have to reinforce their manhood so violently on women's bodies. And within that, you find that you have a conversation where you're looking at black males' masculinity, the issues of identity, and really unpacking why they feel like a woman can be seen as just a sexual object or a, woman's a, a woman doesn't have agency at all when it comes to her life or her body or just, you know, anything yeah. that pertains to her. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. asking the right questions, I it's think. Probably it. and, yeah. I, and I think the, the point you're making are around men being part of a conversation as opposed to women being the only ones who are leading mm. or championing this issue, I think is also a very important factor to sort of highlight. And I think for you, uh, Darido, when we're talking about this culture of violence, I mean, we're seeing obviously women being brutalized and we're seeing femicide, but violence now seems to also be spilling over on a social scale. I mean, we, we've seen a lot uh, with the spate of xenophobic attacks that have been mm -hmm. taking place in, in this country. Uh, I think just, just, as, just a simplified way of, of asking this question, what exactly is this revealing about the psyche of South Africans? Are we just anti-foreigners? What is going on with us as South Africans? Okay, um, I don't think we are anti-foreigners. Anti um, this is more of an African issue as well, more than a South African issue, but it's great that we're coming on this platform to actually reflect on this issue. Um, it pertains to different areas which are really important in society. First of all, education. Not only what you learn in the classroom, but um, sensitizing young people as to the history of Africa. You know, when you look online, you see that Pan-African fathers such as Julius Nyerere were very vocal and active in liberating South Africa. So trying to sensitize young people on those topic, topics about where we came from. And also, um, young people mostly gravitate towards peace more than expected. Are we doing a lot in the communities to really go and activate that part? And also it addresses the economic issues that mm -hmm. are coming up mm -hmm. because people are frustrated. Um, and you know, we were talking last week at our summit about creating meaningful livelihoods for young people. Yeah. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Are we giving them enough skills to mm -hmm. really be active members of society? Mm -hmm. Because at the end, this is the kind of retaliation that comes with this um, 
this frustration from not having enough opportunities. Yeah. So I think it's a call, right? It's coming out in a wrong way. It's not shining a bright light. But from this dark period, it is our hope that there is something good that will come. Other stakeholders will come into play. South African government, mm -hmm. SADAC, the mm -hmm. African Union, mm -hmm. because yeah. it is a reflection of that young people do not have a seat at the table, yeah. you know, and yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it's reflected yeah. in that manner. And I think it's good that yeah. you are also shedding light on the fact that it's not just a South African yes. problem. Mm -hmm. This is a problem that we see across the continent. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm also glad that we touched on the fact that, you know, it's not that South Africans are xenophobic, but they're deeper seated issues mm -hmm. that we need to address. And of course, we're going to do that with you, Mubakhari Kohai. But I think the most important thing I want to ask is that we know that social media is very important and it's making such an impact. But when it comes to some of these issues, is it really effective? Is it impactful to, for you to use social media? Maybe that's the question we can ask but all of that is going to happen after the break you're watching expressions Now the nation is in mourning and we continue to tap into your anger and frustrations this evening. Pindasin being a little this is Expressions, your number one youth current affairs show. Is South Africa failing to curb rape, murder and violence? I'm now joined by SABC News producer U Nambusoga Mahlangu as well as Utemba Masango on the show. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, guys. Thank you. Uncle. Thanks for having us. I can see you guys are in black. Yeah. You're indeed in mourning. <laughs> yeah. It's... Now, Temba, what concerns me is that we've had this conversation with you before, mm. and it seems to be coming back again. More women are getting murdered, you know. Um, and I listened to you, in, you know, attentively this afternoon in mm. one of your interviews in which you said it's the small things that build up into all of this. The toxic masculinity that right. continues to resurface. <laughs> um, is there enough not being done, though? I, I would say that it's not a matter of not enough being done mm. uh, in the sense that when the violence uh, manifests or the, uh, you know, the, the gender-based violence, uh, the, the, the femicide manifests, it's, it's going back to the root cause. Mm. Where, where does it come from? Um, and you find nine out of ten times, especially when it comes to men, that society does not necessarily address men's issues in terms of toxic masculinity, in terms of uh, they are feeling emasculated when they are challenged perhaps by a woman who may uh, be uh, cleverer than them or a woman who is bringing in uh, the bacon at home instead of him being working and so on. And uh, those issues don't get addressed to the man to say, listen, uh, you bringing lesser money does not make you lesser of a man. Um, culture, religion, uh, society itself, uh, where we are taught that uh, boys don't cry and you, 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 you stick it in and, and all of those things. And now a guy is expected uh, to be this uh, you know, self-controlled human being, mm. but this person is burning inside. Mm. And he manifests all of his anger to the closest person to him. Uh, and which is probably his girlfriend, his wife, and uh, and that's where you f you come across issues that we are we are having right now. Mm. You so, know, I'm gonna pick up some highlights from what you yes. just said to me, and seemingly my expectations are placed on Avant Besfazane most of the times. Don't do this. Be safe. Right. Don't wear that. Don't wear that. But who are you to dictate to Umundosfazane? Let's not even go there. But why mm. is there so much expectation being placed on Umundosfazane? And and not only that, but uh, we. Women don't rape themselves, mm. women don't kill themselves, don't go out and uh, murder themselves. It's us, you and me, mm. uh, that, that, that do that. So the, so, so the focus should move from uh, ladies, not don't do this, don't do that. We should be teaching our young boys uh, to understand that, listen, being a male does not have to be expressed by you being violent. Uh, being a man does not necessarily mean that you have to beat down uh, uh, the, the woman and understand that she is as equal as you are and she is uh, uh, as, uh, as important as you are to society. Uh, but like I say, we need to go back and change all those mindsets that we get taught. 
It's completely terrible. They don't work in this day and age. Mm. Things that uh, uh, we get taught uh, in church mm. that uh, you know the man is the head of the house. No matter and how stupid he is, and he feels yeah. good. And we've, we've, that's yeah. wrong. And that's uh, the thing, we've moved in with the times, but deeply there's also that I'm a religious belief that have not moved in right. with the times. But Tim okay. we just need to tap into one of our viewers just yeah. to find out, good Balabatini, before we come to you, Nombuso, because you are very upset, and I'm going to just find out why. Mbugeli Lapu, we just need to quickly find out who Utwena Utini with your first expression. Roll it, please. Hi, Expressions. This is Kinsani Chauge. I wanted to comment on the girl that we lost uh, with regards to rape and murder. Um, here in South Africa, there is no justice system because if someone is arrested today, the following day they are out. And with regards to the looting yesterday, uh, I don't I don't know, see how can police allow Abantu to party So I, I really do not know what's happening here. So Tunasbulawa is when he Thank you. So, Nombuso Seswami, um, yeah. you are a journalist, and before you become a journalist, you are a woman, mm -hmm. right? And I'm sure you hear lots of stories in pursuit, and you hear lots of stories on the field, but you said to me you're very upset. Wuti, Ningaban Bisfaza, Nini, to constantly be telling your stories. Tell us more on that. It's sad because I think most South African women don't even understand the difference between a victim and a survivor. Because today, in fact, on Twitter, a whole lot of stories were coming out. It was literally blazing just because of Uyinene's stories, um, story. A whole lot of girls were coming out with stories that happened in 2016, prior that. And I mean, like a whole lot of stories were coming out. It means they found a safety net through her story. But why do girls have to wait for someone's story to happen for them to say their own story? What are we being taught as a society, you know? I'm wondering, is it us as a media that doesn't allow them the space? Is it the justice system that doesn't allow them the space? Or are they being asked way too many questions before they can be served the justice they want? And I was reading another story actually by, um, on Times Live, Tracy, um, some lawyer, he, she's a, an, an attorney, and she's basically saying that from now on today, she vowed to, um, to take cases for free, to help girls to represent them in, in court for free, who've been um, abused or raped or whatever. And she's calling on more lawyers to come and help her because what she stated is that more people, when they, more accusers or rather girls that are being raped or um, violated, when they go to court, their rights are not centered or more favoring them. The rights are more centered around the accused person. Mm. So you go to court, you have been cross-questioned, mm. cross-examined. What were you wearing? What were you yeah. doing? Were you at his house? Were you all drinking? I don't know because people are still victims because victims are people that have not said these yeah. stories. Once you come out and say your story, mm. you're a survivor. But Temba, I want to know from you at the back of what you said, mm. just said, what dialogues or conversations should we be having as about best Lisa? I, I think it starts uh, where we hang out uh, mm. at, at, at football games, in the pubs, uh, you know, at schools, wherever it is. Get the mindset right. The, this thing of us sitting a corner and a lady going past, for her it takes so much just mm -hmm. to go past, uh, you know, yeah. a group of guys standing there, the howling that's going to go on mm. there, uh, the, the objectifying of her. Uh, you know, by the time she's passed there, she's, yeah. you know, survived so much. We need to be able to change that mindset and say, listen, we've got to, first of all, view one another as human beings, as person to person. And uh, and that is something that is really going to take time and, and a hard work because patriarchy really runs deep. Absolutely. Uh, I'm starting to think it may be genetic because it really, oh. really runs deep in the male psyche. And we need to really uh, focus there and start making changes there. Temba Masango, right. Numbuso, Masango, thank you so much for joining us, guys. I, I wish we had more time. But thank just you. quick ones on your Facebook, Mbugeli, that guy says, yes, because it is daunting and intimidating for others who are related in crime to go ask for somebody for help. Sipelo says, yes, the government is failing us big time, and I don't think we have the laws that prevent us men from our animal behavior. I'm sure it's also referring to the xenophobia and the attacks, as well as the violence that have been happening, going rampant on our our streets. Thank you so much for all those comments and Bugelewe expressions. At the back of that, we do continue with this all important discussion. Must we remember to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tune in because this is Expressions.
Welcome back. You're still watching Expressions here on SABC One. Tonight, we are speaking about gender-based violence as well as the spate of xenophobic attacks that we've been seeing in our country. And the poll question that we're asking you, Kohai, is this. Is South Africa failing to protect women from being killed by their partners? And of course, we have to wrap this uh, this, this interview uh, up and, and just give some uh, some some parting shots, I think, to, to the viewers, Kohai. And I think, Bula, I just want to ask you, I mean, social media is a very important vehicle, and I think it's breaking the silence, uh, as we heard from, from one of our guests there. I mean, is it enough, though, to curb this problem? No, it's definitely not enough. And um, the beautiful thing about the movement that Tariu is from is that it's basically asking young people to firstly organize amongst themselves and mobilize, basically saying that, listen, we know what the issues are, so let's come together as a collective and actually do work towards it. And I think the thing that people need to do, looking beyond the hashtag, go out into your community, seek out initiatives that are actually doing work on the ground on these issues. Simple case scenario, next week, Saturday, we're hosting a conversation in the Constitution institutional court that will be talking about the very same thing that Nobuso brought up about condoms, court and patriarchy and how even within the systems that are supposed to protect us as a society are also very patriarchal in themselves. Mm. And, and, and for you, for, for you Darilo, I mean, the stories such as uh, Uyinene, uh, whether it's Leandra, whether it's Karabo, uh, and of course the violence that we're seeing in terms of, you know, attacks to foreign nationals. I mean, these are things that are ongoing and they're not going to be the first and they're not going to be the last. And it seems like as South Africans, we're very reactionary as opposed to being proactive. So what is the solution? How do we, how do we actually bring a stop to this that is effective and impactful? Yes, pegging on how social media is working. It's very effective in highlighting all these issues. But we have to be cognizant that more than 60% of Africans are actually not online. And when we're trying to tap into the demographic that's, you know, that is usually perpetuating this violence, they won't be online reaching, reading these hashtags that we are spreading. So I think as Africans, we also need to tap into the resources we currently have. We have leaders. History rep repeats itself. This is not the first time it has happened. So we really need to have intergenerational dialogues, which is one of the pillars of the African Youth Network's movement that we are representing, <laughs> and really interrogate why we are at this place. Mm -hmm. Because we need to be organized and galvanize the actually the people who are in the communities who are already doing this work mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people but they don't have the spotlight or space or platforms mm -hmm. to vocalize the solutions that they have. Yeah, yeah. and I think yes. just also mention as well that you guys were in Zambia hey, yes. with Mama Grasa Michelle yes. and I mean some of the comments, just as a quick one, I mean, yeah. I mean are young people saying these are solutions that we need to come up with? Yes, definitely. So the African Youth Net Networks movement, it stems from young people asking Mrs. Michelle to create a platform for them to build the solutions. And one of the key components is peace and security. And in Southern Africa, we realize that the absence of war is not, is, doesn't mean that we don't have peace. Like mm. issues like xenophobia and uh, femicide came mm. up and we are creating a framework to actually address these issues. It's amazing that young people are doing something and there's unity yes. within our young people within yes. the continent. So thank you very much, ladies. Thank I'm you. sorry that we thank have to cut you short, but I think we've definitely given the viewers Gokhai just yeah. some food for thought. Thank Absolutely. you, ladies. Thank you, Jackie. We have to thank you guys so much. Thank and Dimbugeli, thank you so much, Nawala Pekaya, for joining us. I think it's also about the conversations that we also mm -hmm. have as Avantu Lisa that feed into the toxic masculinity. Yeah. Let's stop it. Mugeli, thank you so much for joining us. Cutting Edge is up next. And Salengal.